Hi everyone, it's Sarah. I'm really happy today because I am out in the <laughs> garden and I'm here with my little helpers. <laughs> I'm excited to start planting some cabbage plants, but I looked at the area that I'm planning on planting them in and it's looking uh, pretty awfully weedy. It's pretty thin on wood chips down here, so I'm gonna go ahead and weed it first. Chickens are loving those meals. All right, so we've been out here about half an hour and I got it all weeded. I don't know if you can tell, but it's getting close to supper time. So I'm gonna go in and make supper and hopefully I can get planting these cabbages tomorrow. All right, so it's the next day and it is finally time to get some cabbages planted. It is a beautiful day for planting. It's like 60 degrees, which is my like perfect planting weather. I don't do so great when it's like 80, 90 degrees. <laughs> so we're in the greenhouse and we're gonna get our cabbages. So we have them ready to plant. All right, we set aside enough room to plant 32 cabbage, and these are the cabbage we grew from seed. They are an heirloom seed, and they did end up being a little stringy, so I'm gonna plant as many of those as I can. We also got some much healthier looking plants from a family member, so um, we'll plant some. Right too little. Grab up here, grab right here, and put your finger up there. We're loving this new gate. Awesome job, Dad. Thank you. Go help out Jeremy. I'm going to do cabbages right about here. Mom, there's one egg head. Perfect. Let's put that one down here. Mom, there's one double one egg head and there's one egg. All right, so I got all the cabbages laid out, ready to plant. They aren't planted yet, um, but I went ahead and made sure they each had a two foot radius to grow in. I laid out our most delicate cabbages out here because this is kind of the poorest spot in our garden for growth. We find that things don't grow quite as well because there's quite a canopy up there. It's mid-May and I don't know if you can see that, but um, lots of cover and leaves already and by the time summer hits there's going to be more green up there on sunny days This area tends to be a little shaded and the things don't grow quite as well But I did find a new place to put the cabbages. So let's go take a look All right, as you can see Matt finished the cedar bed for the fruit and I don't have plans for anything to be planted right around the edge and I'm going to plant the cabbage right around the edge, so I'm kind of excited. Let's get started. All right, so I'm laying out the cabbages in front of the fruit bed. I went ahead and I'm giving them a two foot radius as well. Um, so about a foot away from the bed and about two feet away from each other. All right, so I went ahead and I laid out this first row of cabbage next to the fruit plants. I left a little spot down on the corner by the raspberries so that we can get in there and pick some raspberries. I also stopped it about right here so that we have all of this space here to get in and get to the strawberries and the blueberries. And our arch is right here where our cucumbers are gonna be. So I think those are gonna come out I think those are gonna come out a little ways and I wanna make sure I um, have room for those. But I still have more cabbages. So 
I'm gonna make another row. Um, I'm gonna plant another row right here. I wasn't sure kind of what I was gonna do by our trees. I'm not sure I wanna go under it, but I'm gonna go kind of right up to it at least. So let's get those laid out. Alright, I finally have all the cabbage laid out where I want to plant them and I need to get planting because it's almost lunchtime already. If you're not familiar with Back to Eden gardening, I'm going to show you real quick how I do that in my Back to Eden garden. So Back to Eden is real quick, just a simple way to say kind of back to nature, how nature does it. And out in nature, things fall off the tree and they provide ground cover for the plants which provides um, moisture for the water. So what we do is we cover our entire garden in wood chips. We don't till our garden, this is a no-till method. The wood chips lay on top and then when we're ready to plant, we actually set, scoop aside the wood chips and we get to the dirt. The wood chips do break down and become soil themselves. So what I am actually digging into formally was wood chips. Once I dig my hole, I'm putting my cabbage plant inside and I'm putting the dirt back around it nice and tight. I like to um, put my cabbage plants in all the way up to the first set of leaves. So once I get it um, in there and I get the dirt around it all the way up to those top leaves, I usually just leave the wood chips aside for now. And once the plant is growing up and hardy, I will go ahead and I will actually move the wood chips back around the plant. This also helps so that weeds do not grow because they're only going to be able to sneak up right next to um, the roots of the cabbage, which is really helpful because I don't do a whole lot of weeding. I'm going to leave these kind of bare for now and for a few days until I see that they are really um, progressing well and then I'll put the wood chips back around. I think we are going to bring some more wood chips down here because it's pretty sparse in this area. This is like the very back corner edge of our garden. One thing I love about the no-till method is it is so easy to dig in. Um, this is probably the hardest part of our um, garden to dig in and I'll show you just how easily I can scoop it out with the trowel. All right, so the cabbage are all planted. We ended up putting three rows over here next to the fruit beds, and I think it's gonna work out really well, so hopefully it does. So do you wanna come and give me a hand? <laughs> no, I'll hold the camera though. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the people watching. They can just reach right through that lens and give us a hand and be done. Just like that. Just kidding much better if you do it yourself. Get the wood chips nice and thick. Well, at least three inches. By this fall, if you're gonna put like three or five inches, three inches, somewhere in there, the time this fall comes, there's only gonna be an inch left, if that. If the soil needs it, it will break down so fast you'll be shocked. Our first year doing it, we did uh, was it a foot to 16 inches. It was that much. This, Not this part, from there up. It took forever to do, and it was so worth it. By next, that next spring, we went to a plant, and there was this much wood chips, and it, the ground wasn't even that soft yet. So we went and got another load, and then we put three inches around everything all over again and I was glad we did too because by that fall they needed it again so this year I didn't add any this spring but this last fall I added some and I added grass so this fall I'll put some down again because you can tell it needs some but it's still 
it's okay so it does so if you liked this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you would like to see more like this please click the subscribe button and glad you got to see us again bye people watching this probably have a nice ice cold beverage sitting on the porch going look at that guy plant his garden bread and wood chips time Monday comes I can say look at that guy he has to go to work <laughs>